didn't really like the script because the script was still being re re reworked. Uh, but he needed money. And, you know, we sometimes forget that, you know, actors need to pay their mortgage like anybody else or need to go out on a date like anybody else. And so he agreed to do the picture. But we still didn't have a leading lady, and we had tested twice already for uh, the pretty woman. And so uh, we were two weeks away from shooting, and I asked Michael Roberts, I said, what about Julia Roberts? And he said, yes. I mean, why didn't I think of that? Is it, wouldn't it be all right if I called her? And I said, well, you should call her agent, and, you know, and, and you know, she hasn't gotten the role yet, Michael. Uh, but she uh, gave a great uh, uh, screen test. We screen tested 11 uh, young women at the time, and she ended up uh, getting the vote. Uh, generally, what we would do is, when, in screen test, we would actually set up a theater, and we would invite the employees in. And just quietly, because we can never get into the press, they would take a sheet of paper and, and write who, uh, who they preferred in the picture, one, two, three. Uh, but hands down, you know, uh, uh, from the standpoint of the chairman of the company, Michael Eisner, to every employee who came into that screening room and, and did a little task at the Julia Roberts. And, uh, and it's interesting because Julia could have gone on to be uh, not a star, but just a working actress. But it was really, I think, that role and also the role in Steel Magnolias that really suddenly made her uh, part of public consciousness. And uh, I was thinking about uh, Brad Pitt, who would come into our office and, you know, as they say, you know, throw a, throw a stick in Malibu and you'll find, you know, and athletic blondes. And so, you know, he, you know, Brad Pitt is a nice looking guy and he has a certain level of charisma, but I don't know. Um, and then he landed a role that was highly sexualized, which was uh, in Thelma and Louise. 